everyone and welcome to another adventure on It's a Farm Enough Life. So it's been so long since I recorded a video that I no longer have hair. So today I'm gonna make a few more planter boxes as well as plant my tomatoes. Um, I'm planting my tomatoes super late in season. Yes, I know. Um, but I'm gonna plant my tomatoes and um, some other stuffs and I figured you guys should come along. So let's get started. Maybe we should say hi to the ducks for a second. Should we say hi to Jared for a second? Jared's digging the dirt that's going to be going into our planter boxes. We're going to be moving this front garden and relocating them into our planter box garden. And this front garden is going to turn into a play structure for Jack. Here are the duckies. They are getting so huge and I need to be moving them soon over to the duck house because this um, tan bark isn't that great for their feet. So I want to get them off of here. But we're finishing the duck house this week, painting it up, letting it off gas, and then moving them in next week. So before we begin, I'd like to preface this with saying, I'd like to preface this by saying that, what? So before we begin, I'd like to preface this by saying that I am no expert at planting tomatoes. I've grown tomatoes before, but I've never actually like cared about growing them and like really wanted and really like decided that I was going to nurture them through the entire season. So first of all, it may not seem like I care because I started planting them super late into the season, but I'm just a procrastinator. Um. <laughs> Do not look for advice on tomatoes from me. I am new. Go to Roots and Refuge or someone else. Roots and Refuge specifically is, is where I go and Jessica is amazing. Um, and she knows a lot, especially about tomatoes. So if you want advice about tomatoes, go there. But if you can't tell, she's the reason why I'm really excited to try and put a lot of effort into growing tomatoes this year. So. Um, I'm just planting my tomatoes right now and I figured you guys could join. So I'm going to pluck off this one all the way at the bottom and um, he's just sad. This one up here, he's broken already. So I have to cut him off. Cut off these ones, these ones, these ones. These ones. So because I'm planting them late in the season and it's also very, very hot, I cut off most of the bottom stems right here. These should sprout um, roots. So because it's super hot and I'm starting them super late, even though they're already small as it is, I'm going to um, take off the top and bury this whole stem into the ground because it's going to give it, I think, Hopefully it's going to give it an extra boost of energy that it needs because it's going to allow a better root system to grow. When it comes to planting, I'm not a tools person. I don't use shovels. Hori Horis. Jared loves them. I just like, I can't remember to use them. <laughs> Although for building things, I will say that tools are really awesome. So without breaking the roots, what I'm doing is I'm unbinding them. I'm not breaking them, but I'm unbinding them because they are a little bit root bound because they've been inside their planter for too long. So I just want to unbind their roots to encourage their roots to spread out more and grow. I'm also, while I'm doing this, going to pluck off any flowers I see. These are um, non-determinants. Most tomatoes are. That means that they uh, will not grow a certain determined number of fruit. They will continue to grow as much as their climate will let them. 
So because of that, I can continue to clip off their flowers without worrying about hurting the plants. It's actually gonna help the plants because they won't send all of their energy into producing fruit. Instead, what they're gonna do is send their energy into producing leaves. And the more leaves they have and the more foliage they have, the more fruit they can produce and um, the better fruit they can produce because the more nutrients they can get from the sun because they have more leaves to get that nutrients. So with all of that said, I am going to do my normal clipping off the bottom leaves. So these leaves I'm just going to toss into the compost. Hi hey, Gloria Chicken. This is Gloria Chicken. She's our little imprinted chicken. If you really like seeing Gloria Chicken and you want to see more of her, I always post a lot of her on our Instagram story, which is just, it's a farm enough life. That's good. I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back later. So now I need to create a shade structure that's going to go over these for when it gets really hot or even for if it gets really cold. So let's move Glory Chicken so I don't squash her. from the fact that there's a whole mess around the planter box we are done here so I'm gonna show you what I did to create the shade structure here so this shade structure is not permanent this is gonna get taken down we are going to have some trellises that you can walk under that they're going to climb on as soon as they're big enough to climb but for right now because it's hot um, and I want to give them a little extra help I went ahead and put up this temporary shade structure down here I folded, I folded these edges in and slid them underneath the planter box on both sides. I know that this looks like it's sticking out, but it's actually really sturdy in there. So I was having the issue that it was still too tall and flopping over, so I went ahead and screwed this board onto our planter box and then tied it at the top here, so that way it keeps the structure up nice and steady. Um, anyways, I went ahead and took the shade cloth that we had, um, wrapped it around, and then I took some gardening twist ties, which is one of my favorite things, um, along with baling twine, baling wire, and zip ties um, to tie down things temporarily. Okay, so now before we start building that second planter box I was telling you guys about, let's go inside and take a quick coffee and lunch break because that is always needed when it comes to working hard anywhere. So the bees are doing something interesting that I thought I'd talk about for a second. Now, some of you guys that watch our videos are experienced beekeepers. So if you have anything to add, please do because we're always trying to learn more. Um, but <laughs> if you can see here, my bees are crowded at the entrance of their hive um, and they're doing a pattern. It's a flight pattern in the sky. Sometimes it could be because they're too hot and they're crowded around their doorway. Sometimes it could be because they're swarming. So a good way to tell um, if you're wondering what they're doing is to look at the pattern in which they're flying. 
if you look at these guys you can see that they are actually flying in a pattern and this is the way that bees communicate they're telling the other bees either where a new nectar source is maybe they had new brood hatch out and they're showing them their nectar sources are maybe they just found new nectar sources because they've actually um we've been in a nectar dearth and they haven't been able to source nectar adequately enough so they could have found a new nectar source as well so we took a little coffee break we had a little bit of lunch and uh, jared's inside putting jack down for a nap and i'm going to continue building our planter box enjoy the time lapse finished our planter box now we added some gopher wire we went ahead and reinforced the edges here's a little table of some sad starts we have here i put dirt inside of the planter box we just built so now i need to consider what plans i'm going to put in the planter box because i'm going to have a trellis that's going to span across both of our planter boxes both the ones that we planted the tomatoes in as well as the planter box that we built now I want to make sure that what we plant inside of our new planter box is also going to be climbing so that it can make use of that trellis. So let's see what kind of climbing things we have here. Some cucumbers. More cucumbers. I think I'll take some of these. A squash. So let's do this one. I also want to do this one. I think I'm going to stick with our tomato theme for this specific planter box. So I'm gonna go with a traditional beefsteak tomato, super sweet tomato. All of these are organic, by the way. I have more beefsteak tomatoes. Super sweet. So it looks like we have three super sweet, three beefsteak tomatoes over here. I think I'm going to take this whole tray over there and see if I can plant both some tomatoes as well as some of these other climbing plants that we want here too. I'm going to save this pepper because the peppers are not trellis plants. Those are going to go in planter boxes that are also going to be in our planter box area but aren't going to have our trellis archways. So let's go ahead and take this tray over to our planter box and start planting some of them. So here's our new planter bed with our dirt inside of it and our tray of start. We're gonna go ahead and arrange them where we want them to be and Jack and I are gonna plant them. Yeah. This one, okay. Uh, hey yo! Okay, so just like the other ones, we're gonna check for any roots that are bound and unbind them if they are. Yeah, mo, mo. Just like we did like five minutes ago in the video. That was like three hours mo. ago for me. So these are cucumbers. They're not gonna be planted the same way as tomatoes. We are gonna go ahead and get any roots that are bound unbound, but we're not gonna take off any of the leaves. They need all the leaves that they can get right now, and they're not as susceptible to uh, rot because of moisture as tomatoes are. On top of that, cutting off the stems and burying it deeper isn't gonna help because it's not gonna produce more roots. And on top of that, there isn't enough stem to cut off to bury deeper, even if we wanted to. So we're not going to treat them the same as tomatoes because they are not the same as tomatoes. Oh, wait. 
Now, luckily, oh, wait. these are in such loose peat moss that it's actually going to be really easy to break these plants apart. I break plants apart the same way I unbind roots, very gently, like I'm massaging the plant. The less roots we break, the better it is for our plant. When it comes to separating the roots of two different plants, you're always going to be breaking some of them, but the less we can break, the better, always. So we finished planting over here. Let's go ahead and take our leftover seedlings and put them back on the seedling table and get these chickens off the fence. Oh no, and the chicken in the other coop is out too. Okay, all the animals are getting out. Wait for me, Jack. Because the sun's actually gonna set soon, I'm not gonna go ahead and deep water these plants because it's also gonna rain tonight. So we don't need to worry about it getting too hot and they're gonna get a nice deep watering anyways. So I think we planted everything that we can plant today. My overall vision is to get a trellis that's gonna span across here. Come on! So that we can have an archway that the tomatoes and other plants that we just planted can grow across. That's why this is only temporary. We are gonna have a lot more planter boxes in this area, but I think that's everything that we have for today. So we're gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you guys so much for joining in on another adventure on It's a Farm Enough Life. Sing hi to your babies.